hacking webcam modules from broken laptops, and the cheap USB webcams. This time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. It goes without mention that a lot of people are working from home right now. And that's kind of put us into an interesting situation where we need webcams. A lot of people need a lot of webcams all at once. Which kind of bred a bit of a market for the term scalpers, people who go out and buy things and sell them at a much higher price than they should do. While we expected medical things, we didn't anticipate a lot of electronics that we need for our day-to-day -day lives. And so things like webcams, things as cheap as the old common trusted Logitech C920 for $40 or $50 are going for $150. Things like the brand new Logitech Stream Cam, that's normally a $170 webcam, it's now going for $250 on up. So what are we to do when we need to get our faces on someone else's screen, not necessarily with the highest quality, but they just need to be there? Well, as it turns out, a lot of old laptops that a lot of us have lying around have a little tiny webcam module in them. And that webcam module actually speaks over USB. It's just an internal USB bus. You might be asking yourself, if I've got a laptop with a webcam in it, why don't I just use the laptop with the webcam in it? And any one of you that does also knows that we all have a lot of laptops laying around that aren't necessarily usable or great. And a lot of us also have des desktops without cameras and we need, again, a camera to do the thing with the stuff. So that brings us to what we're talking about today. We're taking these tiny little modules and hooking up a USB cable to them and making them into a package that's actually useful. Now, this doesn't just have to be for normal video talk kind of stuff. Well, that's one benefit. These also make great cameras for projects, home security systems where you want something discreet, or a pen testing platform, you know, a pen testing situation where you want to put a camera up in a corner and you don't necessarily want people to know it's there, or even robotics where you want computer vision and again, you don't necessarily need the highest quality, you just need a tiny camera to fit on a drone or on a small robot chassis and plug into a Raspberry Pi. These cameras are great for that. And the best part, they can be had for just a few dollars on eBay or if you've got old dead laptops lying around, just pop them out with a screwdriver and wire them up, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's dig into it. Now this is actually a pretty straightforward hack and I'm not even entirely sure I would call it a hack so much as 30 seconds with a soldering iron. This is actually one of the units I've prepared. And as you can see, it's just a glob of heat shrink with some double-sided tape on the back, that same VHB I talked about in the last video. Under this heat shrink, you have this same camera module, which came out of some HP Elite 11 laptop or something. And I got this on eBay for $3.65. Now, the cool thing about a lot of these modules is, like I said, they're cheap. But furthermore, a lot of the manufacturers use the same pinout across their board. So all HPs will, generally speaking, have very similar pinouts. So I couldn't find the pinout for this exact camera, but I did find pinouts for other HP cameras, and I did a simple multimeter test to check on a pad I knew was 5 volts and a pad I knew was ground, or in this case, this whole heat sink is ground. So I was able to test which, which pin was the ground and then make an educated guess based on the diagrams I could find where the other pins led. Now this does have a couple extra other pins for microphone audio. I didn't actually wire that up, but that's something you could totally do with those tiny little Electrat microphone modules. However, we all know what laptop audio is like, so I'm actually using my Blue Yeti microphone. Surprisingly, the scalpers haven't gotten to Yeti microphones yet, so. Now the one difficulty with this particular module is the fact that this connection is absolutely tiny. This is smaller than a uh, 0.05 millimeter pen pitch or something like that. If you're salvaging a module from a broken laptop, you're gonna have the benefit of getting the whole connector pigtail. You can just cut it off somewhere down the line and solder wires to those other wires, and that will save a lot of hassle, and then the mo module will be easy to disconnect and replace. However, for me, I actually took a desoldering station, a hot air station, heated up this connector, popped it off, and soldered tiny uh, 26, 28 gauge bonding wires, wire wrapping wire to it, and then soldered my big USB cable wires. Those then got wrapped around the back of the module, glued in place a little bit for strain relief, and then heat shrinked over. And that's really all there is to it. This is just a quick tip. I, I can't even call it a tutorial because 
so many of these modules exist in so many different forms that you are going to have to dig for the information a little bit, but you can do some educated guessing to figure out what pins go where. This is more of me giving you that idea, showing you that it works, and in fact, we're going to check out the quality here in just a moment, and it really does just work. I didn't have to install any drivers. Uh, the one issue I did have is the LED always is on. I believe that is a proprietary driver thing on this particular module. However, you can either desolder it or just cover it up, or if you find it useful, you can just use it. I desoldered it because it does generate a bit of heat and uses a little extra power, and I didn't need the LED because I've got a big light panel. Like I said, you're not going to win any video quality or beauty awards with this camera, but if you need a camera and you only have a few bucks to spare and a Old, or an old laptop and a USB cable, you can throw this together real quick and it just works. Now real quick, we're gonna take a look at the quality of this webcam. Please excuse the unflattering angle, but as you can see, it's not great, it's not terrible. For the cost of this webcam, or potentially free, it's gonna definitely work. More lighting is always better with these little webcams, and this one actually outputs at 720p all the way down to like 116 by 56 or some super weird resolution. I believe that's an artifact of the default UVC Windows driver. But that just goes to show how quick these things work. There was no drivers to find. All I did was spend about 30 seconds soldering up this cable to it and it worked. And it can be even quicker for you if you salvage it with the connector on the end. And that's about all there is to it. Hopefully in the next video, I'll get this connected to a Hack5 Keycroc so that we can post up a tiny little webcam security camera surveillance thing. I I'm gonna work on that a little bit and get back to you. But if you'd like to get your own Keycrocs or Wi-Fi pineapples or anything of the sort, be sure to check out the Hack5 store down below. I've been Glitch, Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.